Hello friends, this video on wastewater story part 6 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. We will proceed with the secondary treatment of sewage and this is again very important. But here the, uh, the beautiful thing that we will see is it is not exactly a physical treatment rather a biological treatment. So here we will see that living organisms themselves help in removing impurities from wastewater. So here the effluent from the primary treatment, effluent is nothing but the clear water which we have received from primary treatment. So that is now passed on to the next level for secondary treatment. So what happens here that that particular liquid is constantly agitated, it is blend properly, it is constantly mixed and from here this uh, effluent which have been received from the primary treatment that is passed on to the aeration tanks which are also known as aerators. So what are these aeration tanks? They Because air is pumped into these tanks that is why they are called aeration tanks or aerators. So also called aeration tanks. And a very important process takes place here. Now, why do we want to pump so much of air into this tank? Because we want aerobic microbes to grow here. Now, what are aerobic microbes? These are microorganisms which decompose substances in presence of oxygen. So that is they break down complex organic substances into simpler forms. So this breakdown will happen only in presence of oxygen because these type of microorganisms mostly bacteria they need oxygen in order to do this breakdown. So these my aerobic microorganisms they break down the organic matter in fact they eat up the organic matter that's how you can uh, consider it. So whatever organic impurities are present in the wastewater they are removed by the action of these aerobic microbes. But what do these aerobic microbes need they just need the presence of oxygen and from where do we give them oxygen so that oxygen is given by the aeration tank that is why in this tank a special provision is there so that air is externally pumped into this tank. So you see this is the aeration tank, air is pumped into it and in presence of air the microorganisms can grow, they can proliferate and these microorganisms then can start consuming the organic matter. So the organic impurity keep on decreasing. So this is a very important uh, step in the process of sewage treatment. Now in this case the treatment is not physical treatment because we are not physically removing the organic impurities rather than the organic impurities are removed by the action of living organisms. So that is why this type of treatment is called biological treatment. So basically the secondary treatment involves biological treatment of the sewage. <clears throat> now the question is till how long should we keep the wastewater in the aeration tank to be acted upon by the microorganisms so how long should we wait how do we know that yes now the uh, water is clear from the organic impurities so for that purpose we introduce a term called BOD so BOD is a measure which tells us uh, the polluting potential of the water that is how much uh, pollutants the water contains now so that is uh, denoted by BOD so BOD is called biochemical oxygen demand what is biochemical oxygen demand now these microorganisms the aerobic microbes which are present in the water they are utilizing the oxygen correct so <clears throat> basically the more the aerobic microbes take up water the more they are functioning correct so now the amount of oxygen which is needed by these aerobic organisms in water to break down the organic material in water at a particular temperature over a period of time this is known as BOD that means it is nothing but how much oxygen the microbes are utilizing in order to decompose or in order to eat up the organic matter. So it is a, a parameter to measure the amount of oxygen that is being used by the aerobic organisms. Now if we are able to get an idea about the amount of oxygen which is being used by the aerobic organisms, we also get to know that how much of decomposition has already taken place. <coughs> So we can say that lesser the value of BOD, lesser is its polluting potential. Now lesser value of BOD means 
less amount of oxygen is now needed by aerobic organisms why because less amount of organic matter is present so let us say too much of organic matter a, a huge amount of organic matter is present so in order to decompose this huge amount of oxygen will be needed by the aerobic microbes right now as it keeps decomposing the organic matter the amount of organic matter will keep reducing now when the amount of organic matter is very less in that case the amount of oxygen which will be needed by the microbes that will also be very less so the amount of oxygen is nothing but bod or biochemical oxygen demand so lesser the value of bod lesser is the polluting potential of water that means what is polluting potential that is ability to cause pollution that is polluting potential so that means uh, when the value of bod becomes very less so when it is considerably reduced then we say that secondary treatment can be stopped there because we should know right that where exactly we should stop secondary treatment because microorganisms they are like minute organisms we cannot see them but the oxygen which is present in the water that can be measured and once we can measure that we can see that uh, if the value of bod is be has become very less that means very small amount of organic matter is now present in that water so we can stop the secondary treatment so b the concept of bod is very important because it decides uh, for how long the secondary treatment needs to be continued so now let us say the bod has reduced significantly so what next so now the effluent that is the clear water which is which has got rid of the organic impurities that is now passed on to a settling tank so till now it was in in the aeration tank where air was being pumped in now it is passed on to a settling tank where it is just allowed to be uh, remain undisturbed for some time so you just leave it there without disturbing it at all so that is why it is called settling tank because you allow it to settle down on its own and after some time you observe that the bacterial masses the microorganisms the aerobic microbes they start settling down at the bottom and this forms the activated sludge so sludge we have used the term while we were talking about the primary treatment in water clarifier that the solid impurities which uh, which settle down at the bottom is called sludge so here also this is solid impurity at the bottom it is called activated sludge because it contains the uh, aerobic microorganisms so now once the aerobic microorganisms have settled at the bottom so basically here you will have the activated sludge and on the top you will have clear water so the clear water will which comes out of this is now the clean water which is which has got rid of all impurities but the question is what is going to happen to this activated sludge so the sludge which is being taken out what are we going to do with that sludge now this sludge can also be utilized in a different way so let's see what do we do now some of these sludge are passed back to the aeration tank <clears throat> to act as starters that is in the aeration tank we want more and more microbes to grow but to start at least few microbes need to be introduced from outside after that in presence of air they will only keep on growing they will keep on reproducing and their numbers will keep on increasing so to act as starters some of the microbes which from this activated sludge can be introduced into this aeration tank so that is one way some part of the activated sludge can be utilized other way is the remaining is passed on to the anaerobic sludge digesters now what are these now here again some different types of microorganisms help to uh, break down the activated sludge also so we will talk about anaerobic sludge digester and also some activated sludge can be dried and they can be used as manures because they are very rich in nutrients they are very rich in nutrients like nitrogen and phosphates which they help in better growth of plants and therefore they can be used as manures so now what we are now what spending on our plate is the anaerobic sludge digester that is how there exists something which can even digest the sludge so let's see so here but as such the water got treated here and this water has very less impurity now the water which comes out of the settling tank 
So let's talk about the anaerobic sludge digester. So do, do you notice the name anaerobic? That means here we are going to talk about something in absence of oxygen because aerobic microbes meant in presence of oxygen. Aerobic means presence of oxygen and aerobic that means absence of oxygen. So in these type of digesters instead of aerobic bacteria anaerobic bacteria decompose the sludge. So these anaerobic bacteria in absence of oxygen they break down the sludge into simpler forms that is they break down sludge. So they start digesting the sludge itself that is why it is called anaerobic sludge digester because anaerobic bacteria digests the sludge. So construction wise these digesters are closed circular tanks so here you can see some of the anaerobic sludge digesters you just look at them they are huge they are closed tanks now why are they closed any idea on why are they closed because it are, these are anaerobic they do not want oxygen to enter so that is why they are closed. So inside this the anaerobic microorganisms what they will do they will break down the organic matter because what is sludge? Sludge is nothing but this is also organic content right. So this organic content is broken down and during the process of breaking down several gases are emitted. Some of the prominent gases are methane, carbon dioxide and also small amount of hydrogen, nitrogen, hydrogen sulfide are also released. So these are the major gases which are produced by the action of these anaerobic bacteria. So almost half of the amount of the sludge is converted into gases while the remainder can be dried and then used as a residual soil like material as I was telling that it can, a part of the sludge can be dried to be used as manures. So in during this process as I said these important gases are produced and these are called biogas and this biogas acts as an excellent fuel. So it acts as a very good fuel and uh, it can be used for producing energy in a lot of ways. So, so that way as you see here the sludge which was nothing but the solid waste during the sewage treatment process. So that waste was also digested to some extent which resulted in the formation of a fuel called biogas and the remaining part was dried to be used as manure. So basically the sludge which was the waste material that was also utilized in a nice way. Correct. So this was about the secondary treatment. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.